I've had a few things cross my mind when driving an Aerial Atom 300 in the past. Blimey, this is fast, is the main one. What's never occurred to me is the thought that what it really needs is another 200 horsepower. But here we are, the Aerial Atom V8, a 25 unit limited run of 150,000 pound V8 powered atoms. I think we just want to see it in action really, don't we? Okay, so here is the Atom V8. We're on Milbrook's famous hill route. And a big difference between this Atom and a usual one is that it's unbelievably loud and there's no supercharged Honda motor. Instead, it's got aerial zone, three litre V8. It's naturally aspirated, revs to 10,600. And instead of a six speed box, six speed manual box, I should say, it's got a six speed pneumatically controlled box. As long as you've got more than 10% throttle on, 10% of throttle is quite a, it's quite a lot in this thing. You don't need the clutch on upshifts and you don't need the clutch on downshifts. Oh, and I'll be honest with you, it is not the most refined of gearboxes, but it is very fast. I mean, sometimes on a downshift, you get this little pff of air, like somebody's firing a, an air rifle behind your head. But, crikey O'Reilly, it doesn't half shift quickly. I reckon 20 milliseconds on a fast upshift. I mean, that's astonishing. It's just like there's absolutely no break in torque whatsoever. Oh, flip it, heck. But what, sorry, <laughs> it's the power. I mean, no, it's full throttle. You can't use it a lot of places. It's just too fast. An aerial claim, caught to 60 in under three seconds. So no complaints about the gearbox. Because this engine makes 475 horsepower and the Atom weighs not a great deal at all. Its power to rate ratio is just over 900 brake horsepower per tonne. The Formula One support racers, the GP2 cars, they have about 900 brake horsepower per tonne. That is how fast this car is. So, how is the handling? Well, it's mostly sort of Atom-ish, really. I mean, Atom's always got a lightly loaded front end, so there's a touch of understeer, which is exacerbated on this model until the tyres are really up to temperature. But it's very placeable. I mean, the steering's beautifully direct. It's set up here stiffer than a 300. And that makes it more suited to track work, proper racetrack work, rather than this hill route. So it's a little bit skippy around somewhere like this. You could just do with a bit more compliance in it. There are times when it just threatens to sort of brake traction a bit over bumps and that front end never feels quite totally planted. I think you'd want a nice smooth racetrack for that and then you could build up your confidence in the front end. But even so, on a dry day like this, and even on suspension settings that I don't think are ideal for the track, he says skipping over a massive bump. Even so, I can't think of too many cars that would be much faster around here, I can tell you that much. Oh, I tell you what, crikey, I mean, this thing is un incomprehensible. It is so unbelievably fast. This isn't just the fastest road car I've ever driven. I mean, this is pretty much the fastest production car anybody's ever driven. And I thought, you know, I thought Ariel had maybe gone a step too far, but the fact is it's utterly usable, utterly tractable. You can just dip into the performance. But when you want the lot, oh, it's like nothing else on the planet. I mean, I wasn't sure I was going to like this car, but you know what? It is utterly, utterly brilliant.